Hello artists. I'd like to create some fun art today that reminds me of the season that we're in. Uh, as we approach winter and days start getting colder, um, I just talked to you a little bit about the work of Heather Goller. She is a local artist, what we call a contemporary artist. She's still alive and creating artwork in New York. And she tends to create art that has a lot of bright, colorful patterns, um, really nice, um, colorful designs. So I'm going to take inspiration from her. You guys are going to take inspiration from her. We're going to have our own fun with a little um, mug of warm deliciousness. Okay, so go ahead and grab your paper. I'm going to use a marker so you can see, but please grab a pencil for yourself. And that's all we should need today to get started. Okay, we're going to start right in the center of our paper here. Well, we're going to draw a nice big shape, uh, leaving some room on the outside of it for some other decorations and fun. So let's start near the center and let's draw a shape that comes down. Okay, and over. And then we're going to draw this same line on the other side, draw it up. Okay. And let's connect them with a bit of a curved line up here. Let's make it arch slightly like a rainbow and connect from one side to the next. Okay, that's the start of our art. Now, what I'm gonna go back to is where those two lines meet right here. And I'm gonna draw down and over to the other side. So what we just created was the top of a glass. Can you see it? In fact, it's a mug. So on a mug, we actually happen to have one here. I was drinking my tea earlier. We ha always have a handle, right? So what we just drew, if we look at our picture compared to our actual mug, we have our sides. And then the inside is this kind of center that we drew. Now let's draw the handle. So we're gonna go on either side. It really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna put it on my right side. I'm gonna draw this. Almost looks like an ear, doesn't it? And I'm gonna do that line again, make it double thick. Watch what I do. All right, you go ahead and do that on yours. All right, now the mug is gonna be sitting on what we call a saucer. It's a small plate, right? So what we're gonna go is go down to the bottom of the mug. We're gonna draw a circular shape, but watch where I start and stop it, and watch how it moves. So it's gonna be overlapping. The mug is actually gonna be on top of the plate, so we're not gonna see the whole thing. So we're gonna go like this, boop. We're gonna come around. And we're gonna bring it up. Now it's gonna disappear behind my handle. Depending on where your handle is, you may be able to continue this line doo -doo 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 until the edge of the mug. If your handle is in the way, then stop where I stopped, okay? The handle would be in front of what we call the saucer. All right. Now coming, um, oh, let's draw first the mug on a table. So what we're going to do is a little more overlapping, but again, the mug is gonna be front and center. So everything's gonna disappear behind it. So what we'll do is we'll just start on one side of our paper. We're gonna draw as straight of a line as we can. It's gonna stop when we get to our mug. Now this little space is a curious little space. I would actually see the table inside of that, okay? And then it continues beyond. 
if your line is a little higher, possibly a little lower, you may not see it inside of that space. So you have to look specifically at your piece to see if that line would crawl through it or not. Okay, so now this is the table where the mug is sitting. This is just the background, right? This, this space up here, Just pretend it's a wall. Maybe there's wallpaper on it. Maybe there's paint on it, whatever. Okay, so now with your pencil, I want you to draw, um, because we are thinking about hot chocolate, let's draw inside this space, maybe something that's gonna look like a drink. So something that might go like this. Okay. And then on a really nice cold day when you have a hot drink, we sometimes we see a little steam coming out, right? Have you ever noticed that on a hot drink? Like the tea kettle when it's really hot or in a mug when it's really warm. So this could be really fun. There's several ways to do this. From the mug, you can make some kind of wavy lines. The lines might swirl a little bit. I'm going to do these super light with my pencil. Keep in mind you're using a pencil. Mrs. Sars is using a Sharpie. So you're doing it super light with your pencil. These lines can move up. They can go right off the page if there's room. Okay. Just kind of fun, wavy lines that suggest that our drink is nice and warm. Not too many. I'm doing hmm, three, I guess. I think I'll stop at three. I think that looks good. They could swirl down. They could go right off the paper. Whatever you prefer. Okay, and now I want you to think about a pattern. So a pattern is something that repeats itself. So for a second I'm going to take my coffee mug away and let's just talk about what a pattern is. Right? A pattern is something that repeats. So a pattern can be the repetition of shapes. Right? You can actually create a pattern by combining shapes and colors. So rotating color creates a pattern. Right? Or actually doing different kind of lines. So if I did straight, wavy, straight, wavy, that would create a pattern too. Now a pattern can combine all of these. You could somehow combine all of them to make a pattern. Right? So, when we start thinking about the extra space on our artwork, I want you to think about patterns. So, if we go back to our picture, okay, if we go back to our picture, these spaces will become alive with color and pattern. So I want you to think about what patterns you might use. Think about the best way to create some interest on your mug, on the plate, table, and background. There's a lot to think about, okay? Kind of like um, Van Gogh, right? When we did our Van Gogh picture and we thought about patterns in the background. Um, this time, I think what I'm gonna do is, hmm. I'm gonna create some nice patterns on my mug first. I'm gonna think about my mug first. So I separated that 
Maybe I'll make a pattern like this. And let's think about color last. Let's think about lines and shapes right now. Now you do not have to do what I'm doing. In fact, I'd like you to come up with your own ideas and designs. But you can watch what I do to get some ideas. So I'm thinking shapes, I'm thinking patterns. Now on my mug, I'm actually going to create a pattern that works both on the mug and on the saucer, because usually they come in sets. So I want them to relate to each other. So on the saucer, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to add another line in here, and then along the edge, I'm going to continue those dots. Now it kind of looks like a set. They belong together. So I took something from the mug and I added it to the saucer. Okay, everybody? Think about doing something like that. Now I'm definitely not done yet. I need to think about pattern on the background and pattern on the table. So, hmm, what should I add? What would I like to do with this? Maybe I would like to add something simple like stripes going through the back. Now remember I'm skipping. Okay. I'm going to go behind my steam because I want the steam to be noticed first. My stripe will be behind it. So I'm going to skip, skip, skip every time it comes close. Okay, there's one pattern. Now I just have to think about the table. And I think maybe on the table I'll do something a little different. Maybe I'll even do something like a checkerboard. Notice my stripes are going in a different direction. And what's on my wall. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys to it. You should be working on your patterns now, thinking about all the spaces that we want to add some decoration to. Okay, and I'll check back in with you in a few minutes. Thanks, everybody.